Hi guys, so I've finally gotten enough requests to make this video. This video is going to be um, about how to uh, smooth out a Cabbage Patch's skin that is scratched. So I'm going to use this um, guy as my guinea pig here. You can, as you can see, he is pretty scratched everywhere. And I'm also actually going to use my AA girl here. Um, she's not that scratched, but she does have a few scratches. And unfortunately, the lighting in here is bad. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see, but I mean, wherever the light is reflecting in these little splotch, splotchy kind of areas, um, that's where it's scratched. She's in really pretty good condition, and I'm not gonna um, sand her entire face because I wanna preserve her rosiness. Um, this guy is in terrible condition, so I'm gonna sand his entire face, which means I'm gonna have to sacrifice his rosiness. I know there are some restore, restorers who know how to uh, repaint cheeks, and I'm pretty sure it's probably simple. Uh, I just um, I just don't mind if my Cabbage Patch kids aren't rosy, and um, I just haven't uh, taught myself yet. So before I actually get into um, the smoothing out uh, process, I want to show you how um, to protect their faces when you wash them. Um, so there are a lot of different techniques, um, and this is, I'm talking about when you wash in the washing machine. I think that it's the uh, cleanest way if you um, wash in the sun in, in this front loading washing machine just because of the um, the not just the spin but uh, the suction that you get from a sewing machine it sucks out all of the the dirt and just remember that these dolls came out in the 80s so there there's a lot of dirt in these dolls and who knows what else so I prefer throwing them in the washing machine um, and then um, the way to do that is um, I take a sock and I, I'm guessing this will work with other socks but this sock is wool um, and it's a merino so it's quite it's quite nice and stretchy um, I don't I know that nylon socks are pretty stiff so that wouldn't work and plus nylon socks uh, would actually probably scratch the faces so you don't want to use um, a high content a high nylon content sock you want to probably use um, uh, a wool sock and actually I just I'm looking at a sock here that is probably going to even be better than this sock I'm going to show you so this is a wool um, ski sock and the reason I think this is perfect is because look how nice and soft it is on the inside um, very very nice and stretchy so yeah they do stretch out um, to accommodate the uh, cabbage patches face and uh, what you want to do, this is what I do as soon as I get the doll, um, before I defuzz, before I do anything, is I cover their face with the sock. And you have to make sure that it's, um, it's a tight sock because here's another sock I'm going to show you. This sock, it's like a stocking sock. It's also wool, but it's not going to work because look, this, the cuff here is not tight enough. I actually threw some cabbage patches with my socks because I had to wash my socks too and they uh, they came right off so make sure that the cuff is nice and tight and, and just to show you like it fits um, you do want to pull 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 until as far as you can get so it'll be difficult um, for the sock to come off. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down because I've already washed her and I don't want her hair to fuzz up because right now I'm also restoring her hair, which is almost fully defuzzed, but we're not there just yet. There's still quite a bit of, of fuzz. Um, so yeah, how exactly do you get started? So once you've uh, thrown your doll in with uh, the sock, um, I would just put it on like a quick 30 minute cycle um, put the spin on low, um, it just uh, shakes them around less, and also stuff the washer with other stuff. So I throw in a lot of towels so that there isn't really the opportunity for them to shake around and bounce around and whatnot um, and, you know, cause friction. So, um, yeah, put them in for a 30-minute cycle. Um, 
do you put them in the dryer afterwards? I like to put them in the dryer on low heat for maybe just five minutes, maybe 10, um, because that redistributes um, the fat. Well, it's not really fat, but the stuffing. Um, when they they go in the washing machine, it really um, displaces the stuffing in their body. So you'll see that um, wherever their joints are, it kind of becomes flat here because the stuffing kind of just squeezes into um, these pockets. But if you put them in the dryer, then I don't know what why exactly it does this, but it um, it redistributes their um, stuffing um, into um, their original places. Again, um, that's my preference because I just like my dolls really, really clean, but I know there are some people who don't want to compromise um, any, uh, you know, any of the the shape and or whatnot and don't want to risk scratching um, the face anymore, so they'll hand wash them. It's a lot of work. I used to hand wash my dolls, but I don't do it anymore because it's just way too much work. Um, so yeah, uh, you could throw them in the dryer for about uh, 10 minutes, low heat, um, take them out, and then just let them air dry. And uh, and then your doll should be nice and clean. So once she's nice and clean, uh, this is how you will uh, sand their faces. Now you are going to need super high grit sandpaper. Um, and why exactly do you need uh, sandpaper? You need it to smooth out the scratches on their face. Um, will it get rid of marker? For some reason, there was so much marker on Cabbage Patch Kids' faces, so much highlighter. Um, I don't think it's going to get um, highlighter out. Uh, it won't really get, it definitely won't get really old pen marks out. If you want to get a deep pen mark out, you're going to have to use a sander, an electric sander, and you're probably going to have to sand away a full millimeter. Uh, that's what I had to do. And by the time you're through with sanding away a whole millimeter, the face looks a little weird. So I don't even, I'm probably gonna throw that face away. So um, this is really just to smooth out scratches. Um, it doesn't really help with uh, stains. You can always try, but I don't think there's much hope there for the markers and whatnot. So you wanna start, you want three different grades, uh, grits of uh, sandpaper. I think you can get these in sheets, but I got them in discs because I needed them for my um, for my hand sander, uh, palm sander, and so I um, decided to get them in the discs. I got them from Amazon uh, because I have not seen them in the regular hardware stores. The highest grit that I've seen at the hardware stores are 600, maybe 800, and you're going to need 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. So this is uh, 1,000 grit. See how smooth it is? So. Um, so you're going to start with the lowest grit and you're going to gradually increase your grit. Uh, the next grit is 2,000. And then the one, the final uh, grit that you'll use is 3,000. So I am going to just cut a little piece just about this big. So this is my 1,000. Here's my 2,000, and here's my 3,000 pizza slice. And I'm sure there's a more comfortable way to do this besides kind of just holding it in your hand, um, but this works for me, and I don't mind having dry fingertips. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with my 1000 and the first thing that you are going to notice is it's, it's going to leave more scratches, but don't be worried because the um, higher grit sandpaper gets used up really quickly. It gets dull really quickly. So as it gets dull, it's still working, as it gets dull, um, it'll become less abrasive and it'll start smoothing out the scratches that you've added. So it kind of starts, it looks worse before it starts looking better. So I'm just gonna start in this area here and hopefully by the time I'm done, cause I'm not gonna do the whole face um, in this video, that would be torture for you. Um, I'm gonna uh, do this area here and hopefully by the time I'm done, um, the light won't be reflecting 
in the way it is I'm creating this splotchy look so um, do you have to take the head off I only took this head off because I'm um, putting him in a different body his body was shot not worth rescuing but you don't have to take the body off but this poor boy was in really really bad condition so um, so yeah I have my uh, face um, if you're sanding wood I'm sure you know that or well I didn't know I had to learn this is you need to sand in the direction of the grain there's no grain on a vinyl doll face so uh, you want to go in a circular motion so I'm going in a circular motion And this is probably where you want to put the YouTube playback speed on 1.5 or 1.75 or maybe even 2.0 because this is probably very boring. Um, but I just want to show you proof that this works so I don't want to leave anything out. Already he's looking so cute. His face is starting to look so much better as if we're back in 1985. I think this head mold is from 85. It's definitely not 82 or 83. I keep forgetting the head mold numbers. Anything that's beyond head mold number four, I kind of have trouble identifying. I mean, everyone knows head mold 19, maybe 17. But uh, this one, I keep forgetting which one it is. Maybe someone can comment and tell and educate me on what head mold this is. So, oh, I said I wasn't going to do his cheek area. But, okay, you want to be careful you're not going near the eyes. Repairing eyes is really, 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 really hard. And so, thankfully, this is a KT. I think this is a KT doll. He's KT or okay? I think he's KT. Let's see. Because he has the slightly raised eyebrow. But he could be okay as well. Uh, KT eyes, the way to tell how if a doll has KT eyes is that they are perfectly um, centered in the, uh, I think it's called sclera, the white part of the eyes. The iris is completely centered in the white part of the eyes. Um, whereas if you have um, okays, this is an okay doll, the iris is cut off. That's also... Um, a signature way to identify a pea doll they're usually always cut at the bottom not usually um, okay so I'm going and going and going and sanding and sanding and sanding did you know that Babyland General Hospital um, issued death certificates just like they issued birth certificates so if your doll's eyes for example um, came off, wore off, there's no way of repairing them. Like stitches, butt stitches, ankle stitches, toe stitches, whatever, those could all be repaired. But um, eye paint, it's not worth it uh, to repair. So you could send your doll back apparently to Babyland and they would issue a death certificate for your doll. Isn't that sad? Like why not just find the same head mold? And, and not Babyland, I don't think Babyland should do this, but why don't you just find or your parents just find the same head mold and just do a transplant? Okay, so already he is looking so much better. Do you see how the light is reflecting on his face in a more even manner? Whereas here, this is the side that I did not sand. Um, it's looking pretty blotchy. I'm doing this on my phone and it's not a new phone so I apologize for the quality. So so smooth and this is just with uh, this is just with the 1000 grit so I think I'm pretty well done with the 1000 grit but I'm not going to throw it away because this 1000 grit um, can be used to smooth out really slight blotches and whatnot. 
I very rarely throw away my sandpaper, which is kind of a bad thing because then you end up with so much clutter in your toolbox. But um, sandpaper is expensive and cabbie restoration tools are expensive. So if you can preserve them, why not? Okay, so. All right, so you see all that stuff on the sandpaper? That is vinyl dust. So now I'm going to proceed to my 2000 grit. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna just sand in circular in a circular motion. Speed up the video, guys. I guess this is kind of like applying foundation to your skin or primer, maybe. I don't know. I don't know anything about makeup. It's so complicated. But from the videos I've watched, it looks like primer and foundation are what are used to kind of even out the complexion. I prefer exfoliant. So circular motion, that's key. And high grit sandpaper. And patience probably. All right, so look how pretty his skin is looking. Look how healthy. And then this one, see, it's still blotchy. I think I've already mentioned it. We are gonna be sacrificing his rosiness just cause his skin is so bad. There's even, it's even scratched um, around the blushed areas. So we'll just have to sand that paint away. And if you can't get into his dimple, and it looks weird because there's a little pink inside the dimple, what you could do is use a nail polish remover to get the color out, uh, or you could use paint stripper. I use paint stripper. Paint stripper is really expensive. I just happen to have it because I also repurpose. I also refurbish vintage furniture, so I just happen to have it. But it's like thirty dollars for like a one like liter bottle um, so unless you're doing a lot of blush removals or paint removals it's not really worth it so I would just use the nail polish remover rubbing alcohol probably works too or it might work I don't want to say probably because I haven't tried it but I have tried nail polish remover and you want to be careful there because apparently nail polish remover can remove, well, not apparently, it will also remove the eyebrows um, and the eye paint. Okay, so he's looking pretty, his cheek is looking pretty good. See, compared to that one, it's starting to look a little more even. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna proceed to my 3000 grit sandpaper. And again, just gonna go in a circular motion. I think what the 3000 does, especially after it's lost its abrasiveness, is it returns the, um, it returns a bit of the matted look because you're probably noticing that, yeah, I'm smoothing out the scratches, but his face is starting to look really, not really, but relatively shiny. Um, and that's kind of, you don't want an oily looking kid either. So the 3000 is really good because it brings back that nice and matte look. And speaking about matte, if you're doing a Jesmar, don't use 1000 or 2000, skip straight to uh, 3000 because their skin is already super matte 
Um, and I would only do a Jesmar if you absolutely have to because their skin is not a smooth plastic. I don't know if you've touched the Jesmar skin, but um, it's a little, how would I say, it's a little textured. And so, and, and that's one of the beauties of Jesmar skin. So when you sand it down, you lose that texture. It becomes smooth and, and it looks a little less Jesmar. And we all love our Jesmars, don't we? Speaking of which, Jesmars are going for crazy amounts on eBay right now. I'm happy I live in Canada. And we had a pretty good Jesmar market back in the day. So once every month or maybe twice or three times if I'm lucky. I find Jesmars in the Canadian wild. Jesmar TLCs anyway. And they have to undergo, undergo all the treatments, even the reroutes. But I prefer restoring than to buying them brand new. But that's just me. I think there's a certain pleasure and satisfaction of taking something that was going to be thrown into the garbage and uh, making it useful again. Especially for those of us 80s babies. Uh, for whom these dolls are so special. Oh, okay, so yeah. I forgot to mention, as you're sanding, keep wiping the face so you're not um, putting your sandpaper through. Um, you're not giving your sandpaper more work to do. So... His uh, cheeks still, I think he still needs a little bit of work. I'm telling you, this guy was in super, super bad condition. I got him for his overalls. And I don't think I would have ever bought him. Because he's really he was really damaged. His hair was in super bad condition as well. But he was wearing the really cute teddy bear overalls. So that's why I got him. And so now that I have him and he's not beyond hope, I'm going to restore him. All right. Yeah, so I'm going to have to probably keep going for a bit, but I'm going to let you go because, uh, I'm sure this is getting a little bit boring, but um, I hope this helps and gives you confidence to uh, to attempt your own, uh, I guess, microdermabrasion session, right? So um, that's the side that's still all scratched and blotchy, and this is the side that I have been working on. Um, so you don't have to buy new cabbage patches for three hundred dollars or whatever um, you can buy a TLC cabbage patch and bring it back to life um, and it's really really rewarding at the end and I'm sure they are secretly thanking you too so um, I think I'll let you go um, I get I guess I should show you how to do the AA too and I'm gonna just do the same thing for the AAs um, their skin is just so delicate um, actually, it's really not the vinyl quality. It's just the fact that the skin is darker, so uh, it reflects light different. That you want to use um, the highest grit. I would start with 3000, actually. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use the 3000 that's already used, so it's even less abrasive. Um, and that way, I'm going to just reduce... I'm going to minimize um, causing more scratches. I have used, I have started at 400 on an AA, and that was an AA who was severely scratched to the point where he had deep nicks inside of his face, as if like a dog had like bit him. Um, but I gradually increased, and it took me hours and hours and hours to restore him. He has no rosiness left at all, but. 
Um, he is really, really perfect and really cute now. Um, and his name's Daniel. I don't really name my Cabbage Patch dolls, but he had to be named. And I love the name, the name Daniel. So, so I'm going to show you how she looks. After a little bit of smoothing out, so, oh dear, I don't think you can really tell um, with this lighting, but, because she, she's also in pretty good condition as it is, um, but she does have some faint scratches. Um, because her scratches aren't that bad, I am actually going to preserve her rosiness, so I'm not going to bother sanding um, around her rosiness, but I'm going to get rid of all the scratches around. So yeah, um, I would suggest to just start with 3000 and um, and do the same thing. Circular motion, circular motion, circular motion. Uh, don't panic if you, if the skin starts looking lighter in those areas, that's just be, you're just causing vinyl dust. Um, and as you um, carry on smoothing out the skin, um, the sandpaper becomes less and less abrasive and um, and you know it, it smooths it out even um, how would you say more evenly so um, don't panic um, and if you have tried to sand an AA and you think that the their face is ruined now because you used too low of a grit um, well there's hope just uh, buy higher grit sandpaper um, if you started with 200, you're going to need to do three, uh, two, you could do, oh my God, you could do like really small intervals, but you don't have to. If you started with 200, you can go 200, 400, 600, 1000, 2000, 3000, but you can also do 200, 220. I think there's 250, but you can do 200, 220, 300, 320, 400. I don't know if there's 420, but I know there's 600, um, 400 and 600. There's not a huge difference. Um, and so on. So yeah, uh, basically in a nutshell, uh, you need really high grit sandpaper to fix uh, your Cabbage Patch's skin. Um, any Cabbage Patch's skin is um, repairable. Um, eyes, uh, be really careful when you're sanding so that you don't uh, mess up the eyes. And yeah, I hope that was helpful and uh, have a wonderful Cabbie restoration day. Bye!